G'day and welcome back to the channel. So it's been a few months since I did the turbo conversion and uh, I wanted to give you an update on where we're at, what problems I've had um, or what problems I haven't had, um, little issues here and there. We'll go over that in this episode. This you crazy mother... So in all honesty, I haven't really had any issues. The thing's been absolutely fantastic. Um, there's a couple of things I'm gonna change on it, um, but it's just to make it more efficient. Let's open the bonnet. Everything's been good, I haven't touched it really. Um, oil cooler under the, uh, the grill's been working out perfectly. Um, there's been no leaks, there's been no issues. But one thing I have noticed, which we're gonna play with today, um, when I put this in, it was quite hot. We were having record temperatures in Australia at the time. Um, and it was going good. But when it started to cool down, um, I noticed a significant increase in power. And on a really cool day, um, this thing just livens up massively. And you can barely keep the back wheels from spinning when you take off. So it's getting huge heat soak. So I've succumbed to the temptation and bought myself a bigger intercooler. Um, which hopefully is supposed to be a direct bolt-in, so we're going to tackle that one today. But apart from that, really, nothing's really happened or changed or anything, really. The gearbox isn't happy, but it hasn't changed. I have a whole spare car right there, which has got a fantastic gearbox. That's coming out. That's going to go in this, but I just don't have the time, the energy, or the access to the hoist at the moment to be able to do that. So we'll just keep running this one for the time being. But let's pull this front bumper bar off and um, swap this intercooler out. So I've done approximately 3,000 Ks in it so far since I did the conversion. And um, update on the old oil cooler, it hasn't budged. It just sits there, it's not bolted in. Uh, and to clarify what I did, because I wasn't really clear, it sits on top of the front um, chassis rail, I guess, bumper support, on top of a piece of... Uh, tie tube in a tube and it just sits there it's not it, it can't physically go anywhere so it wasn't it's not screwed down or anything but it hasn't moved it's good and if you're wondering where my rego plate is i don't run a rego plate i'm too cool for that like rego plates are for pussies so i've done my best to try and keep this as stock looking as i possibly can so it's got stock wheels on it. And the only thing that gives it away to people that know really is the intercooler hanging out underneath. And it will be interesting to see how much bigger that other one is and it hangs out a bit further. So I had a few ideas about changing the wheels and whatever, but I decided I'm gonna keep these stockers on for now. Um, in reality, the rear tires aren't really wide enough for the power that it's delivering, but it is a single spinner diff at the moment. I'll upgrade to a limited slip, but I have a lowering kit for it too, which I'll do soon, just to bring it down to a bit of a cooler stance because she's stock height at the moment. She's a bit high. All right, there's the stocker. There's the aftermarket. The likelihood of this just bolting in, I really doubt, but the hoses might work. We'll just have to see what happens. But it's substantially bigger and thicker. With the thickness, the girth of it is substantially bigger. Let's see what happens. Oh, there's one other thing I was just going to say. One of the concerns I've had with buying something like this 
um, not so much of a way with the radiator, but when you're wanting clean air into an engine, into a turbine, all sort of stuff, having the fear of shavings and stuff. So give it a good shake, give it a blowout before you install it, just to make sure there's nothing in there. You'll hear it if you shake it and there's stuff in there, but this one seems pretty good. But I'm still gonna blow it out and um, just to make sure. So there's one more test I wanna do. I've seen this done before. I just wanna see if it works. Apparently it's a tune these things make, but um, Hmm. Maybe this is just too old to make any tune. I'm not doing any of them. Hang on, let me get the other one. Now, if the interwebs are true, this should sound like a harp or something magnificent. It's brand new. Let's see what happens. A bit harder to hold. What's going on? How do them boys get them to there's to do that. Not making any noises. Nothing. That's weird. All right, so as I expected, none of these holes line up with the factory brackets. It comes with a set of flimsy brackets. Um, I'll shove it up in there and see what sort of clearances we've got and how it's gonna fit. I might actually have to move the horn this time. Actually, I might take that off now because this is substantially thicker. And if I can fit it back there later, I will. Um, but we'll slide this up. I'll just move this horn, hang on. Right there. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna bolt this to. Really? Oh, so shallow. Right, I think I might have nutted it out. I had to substantially shorten these bolts. Chinese stuff. It's kind of why I don't like to buy it, but it's so cheap compared. I would honestly recommend, if you can afford it, to buy something from Australia. But not setting a good example right now. So there's one thing I can assure you in relation to this kit. It's definitely not a direct bolt in. So I got the bottom in okay. Had to drill one hole for that. The top the brackets are too short, they don't reach. I could go and make another bracket, but I'm gonna see if I can fit these uh, factory rubber mounted spaces in there and uh, use those. So with some tweaking and some drilling, they will work just fine. Alrighty, that worked. She's all mounted, so I had to drill two holes on this side for the top and bottom. This side was the factory holes. All right, we're ready to chuck a bar on. I did have to move the horn this time for those who were worried about that. I just chucked it up there, as you can see. Um, toot toot, let's put this bumper on. Actually, you know what, let's start it up. Horn works. No reason why it wouldn't start. Hangs down a fair bit lower. Let's not muck about. Look at that. Looks good. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't need that. Yeah, well, that's noticeably bigger. Let's go for a drive. Buddy, let's see what happens.
You guys good? Going good. 160 bucks well spent, I think. Yeah, there's better quality out there, but bang for your buck, a bit of mucking around. Big difference. Hopefully more consistent. Um, the big problem with this stock setup is the pipes going over the top of the engine, um, which is gonna have a bit of heat soak into them pipes. There's setups where you can run the, um, you move the battery to the other side and you run a pipe on that side of the engine, you run a pipe on that side of the engine. But with the stock manifold, you've got to have this ridiculous right or left hand turn that's really, really tight. And it's still going to get heat soak in that turn anyway. Um, and then it can become a cop magnet. You don't want that. You start modifying intake systems. You've got to be engineered and you can change the manifold. This thing is a budget build fairly low horsepower thing so I'm not really keen to do all that I want to be able to open the bonnet it looks stock happy days everyone's happy but try and make as efficient power as I can so what I want to do underneath the pipes that go over the top of the um, rotor cover is put some um, heat resistant tape under there to stop the heat soak so just little things like that just to give it more consistent power So there you have it, she's still going good. Intercool made a big difference, most definitely. But yeah, as I was saying before about the change in intercooler piping, the way that comes out there, it, they've got to come around and away again. It kind of defeats the purpose. So I think if I put some um, insulation in between the valve cover and the top of that, just reduce a bit more heat soak with the sort of kilowatts this thing's pumping out. Um, with the stock internals, I don't need to go anything crazier than that. But yeah, it's uh, it's been awesome. So what's next? I want to put limited slip diff out of a turbo, lower ratio, give it a bit more bottom end. Um, I want to lower it, and that's pretty much it for the time being. Oh, of course, the gearbox. I need to change the transmission in it because it's not happy. I've said that about 19 times. But anyhow, that's it for me. Stay tuned. Be good to your mates. Like, subscribe. Um, I've got a few more things happening at the moment and I'll uh, start popping up a few more videos. And if anything develops on this, I will let you know. But yeah, take it easy. Thanks for watching. Really? I thought it'd be like... Man...